the enemy is arranging for me I turn it to a divine elevation every disappointment the devil is orchestrating this morning under this atmosphere it is turned to a divine elevation in the name of Jesus are you ready to pray that prayer say father in the name of Jesus I decree and declare over my life and over the life of my brother or my sister whose hand I am holding that every satanic disappointment the enemy is orchestrating for me this morning we declare it is turned around into a divine visitation and elevation in the name of Jesus pray from your heart like a minute Lord we say thank you we give you glory we give you praise we call it done and we declare it so in the mighty name of Jesus. Celebrate God with a big hand and a big shout of praise. Please, you may be seated in heavenly places. Hallelujah. And I declare every stubborn yoke of hell is broken this morning. Amen. Glory to God. Can we celebrate um, uh, uh, our guest, Minister Ayo Sachs? Ayo will come up to close this service with what we call a Holy Ghost party. Amen. We will celebrate God till we go. Is that okay? Hallelujah. And I just felt that we should bring the word briefly this morning just to put balance to what is going on so that we're not just in a jamboree, all right? The excitement, the joy is beautiful. But if you do it with, rele with revelation, it produces better results. Can I say that again? The joy, the excitement is wonderful. But if you add revelation to it, the result is outstanding. Glory to God. It's just like giving in God's house or praying. All of these the activities are good in themselves. But when a revelation is attached to it, you know why you are doing what you're doing. The results are, 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 are better received. Is that okay? So this morning we'll just get into the word briefly. And then we'll get back to praise. Because I believe God is about to open somebody's door. Amen. God is about to grant somebody access in this city. And I'm not hearing the amens. I'm not sounding like you came prepared for a prophetic service. You see, the thing with the praise service, it is more prophetic than it is revelational. All right? So as the word is coming, the prophecy will be coming, your own is just to receive. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen and amen. All right. The power and the mystery of praise. The power and the mystery of praise. That's our topic for this morning. The power and the mystery of praise. In 10 minutes, I trust that I am done with my assignment by the help of the Holy Ghost. And then we get into the praise party. Celebrating the things that be not as though they were. And then celebrating them into manifestation. Hallelujah. You remember that in the realms of the spirit, all that we desire is already done. That God is not, is not about to create. God has created already. It is we who live in the space of time that are waiting to see manifestation. That God has given everything he intends to give, has supplied all he intends to supply, has built all he intends to build. Every blessing is already given. We are waiting for manifestation. Now, some of the things that we do in the place of prayer, in the place of giving, in the place of praise, and all of that that we express, are our way of connecting to what God has done in that realm by faith and pulling it into this realm. Can I explain that again? That there's a fish in water does not necessarily mean you eat a fish that evening. You need a hook. You need a bait. You need to put the hook in the water with a bait on it that draws the fish to it. The fish exists there whether you have it in your hand or not. It is in the realm or a dimension that you cannot or may not see with your physical eyes until you put a hook and a bait. So our acts of faith are our hook and bait into the realms of the spirit to draw from God what is already existing or what he has already given. So when I praise God in faith, that's my hook and my bait. When I pray in faith, that's my hook and my bait. When I um, express obedience to the word in giving, that's my hook and my bait. Hallelujah. And all of these things have the results that they provoke in the life of a believer. Is, is somebody with me this morning? So I am not praying so that God creates a miracle. I am not praising so that God creates a miracle. I am not giving so that God creates a miracle. Say, ah, if you don't give, God will not bless you. I am blessed. 
I give from a blessed mentality. I give from a blessed mindset. I give because I know my God has given me all things already. My giving is my way to plug into that which he has given. I don't praise because I'm afraid that things will not work or that doors will not open or that heaven is not open over me. No, I praise because I know my heavens are open. I praise because I know my doors are open. I am praising to access my open heaven or to walk into my open doors. Is somebody with me in this morning? I am not praying because I'm afraid the devil has more power. No, sir. I am praying to tap into my inexhaustible power. The Bible says, beloved, building yourself up upon your most holy faith, doing what? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In James chapter 5, he said that the prayer of the believer makes tremendous power available unto him. That is what? Dynamic in his walking. So power is there for me. I am not afraid of the devil. That's why I'm praying. No, I am praying to tap into my power. Are you with me this, this morning? Are you with me this morning thus far? So praise is that kind of weapon. James, have I given us a scripture? Did I say James chapter 5? Did I say James 5? James chapter 5 from verse 13. Hallelujah. So we are not praising in order to get God to move. God has moved. God has moved. Are you following me? God has what? He's moving consistently. My praise connects me to his move. Oh, let me say it again. God has moved. Old Testament praise provoked him. New Testament praise plugs me into what he's provoked to do. Ah, let me say it again. Old Testament praise provokes God. All right? He runs to rescue. In the New Testament, my praise plugs me to his rescue program. Hallelujah. Oh, there's an advantage for us as believers. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. And the effects of heaven pray of the righteous man. No, I say from verse 13, sir. From verse 13. Is any amongst you afflicted? Let him what? So the answer to affliction is what? Not complain. Not murmuring. Not grumbling, not depression. Pastor, if you know what I'm going through. Sometimes people show up, the way they want to paint the challenge. Pastor, if you really know what I am going through. Amen? If you really know. Pastor, the way you you would have prayed this prayer. The way you pray is as if you don't understand what I'm passing through right now. Hallelujah. You don't understand. Pastor, you would do night vigil if you knew my challenge. Hallelujah. Should Pastor tell you his own challenge? If pastor tells you his own, you might not sleep for one week. Amen. You know, some people assume that pastors don't have any issues, that pastors don't deal with anything. Because when you stand in the pulpit, you see the way pastor is always exuding energy. You just say, ah, God has blessed this man. Ah, see, he has a smiley all the time. So I say, come to the office. Let me share one line with you. Say, ah, pastor, I think you are the one that needs prayer. Amen. <laughs> pastor, I'm declaring one week fasting for you this week. This is your matter. I thought I had a problem. This is your own. Ah, Amen. Scripture says, if anyone is afflicted, let him do what? Let him pray. Let him pray. Is anyone merry? Is anyone merry? Let him do what? Let him sing psalms. It means praise is a prescription God gave to the believer when he is excited. Huh? I want, I'm going to drive a point home. That praise is given to the believer to express his joy, to express his excitement, to express his uh, satisfaction with the things God is doing in his life. All right? Which means I am meant to see the hand of God before I praise. I am meant to see the perfection of God's beauty in my life before I praise. I am meant to see God do something miraculous before I praise. And of course, the natural outcome of a miracle is you shout unto God. You are, you are excited. You praise him. If I play praise music here, the person who had a, a big break in the last week will be the one who dance the most. Are you following me? Naturally, that should, be the, that should be the outcome. And that's what the Bible says. But then we see a revelation from Scripture. Acts of the Apostles chapter 16 from verse 16 downwards. Paul and Silas are locked in prison. They are in a situation that they shouldn't be merry about. They are in a situation where they should not be excited about. The Bible says they had preached in the name of the Lord and they were arrested and thrown into prison. Their hands were shot in chains. Their feet were put in shackles and then they were locked in the prison. That's not a situation where you should be merry. The Bible says, under that affliction, they prayed. Then, by revelation, they saw their victory. Then they began to sing. Then we realize that we don't wait for manifestation before we praise. We see manifestations with the eyes of the Spirit, and we praise manifestations into our existence. The Bible says, when Paul and Silas began to praise, the prison doors, the foundation of prison, began to shake. The prison doors were broken open. The chains fell off their hands. The shackles were broken. Every prisoner came under the influence of the Paul or of the praise of Paul and Silas. Because scripture says, every prisoner was set free. 
In other words, I can praise God to the point that everyone connected to me breaks into a, 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 a miracle. I can. Hallelujah. He said, if anyone marry, let him what? Praise. Which means, if I pray through my affliction, I pray into peace and pray into the merriment of the spirit, whether or not I see the testimony, as long as I feel the peace of God in my heart, the next thing is to praise. Praise is what confirms that what I felt when I prayed has been delivered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You pray, praying and asking the Lord for an open door. And you've prayed for so long. I was praying with someone, you know, a few days ago. And suddenly, this person broke into, into singing. Broke into rejoicing while we're praying. I'm like, okay. This is an indication that what we're praying about has been done. A tough, a tough challenge. But suddenly, excitement and joy just broke loose. This is an indication that what? What you are praying to God for has been done. Amen. In the book of 2 Samuel, we see an amazing story there. There's a man called Obedidom. David has been king for a while. And then he realizes that the ark of God's covenant is not in the house of Israel. And the ark of God's covenant represented the presence of God. Scripture says, as long as the ark went before Israel into battle, Israel will not come back defeated. Yeah? As long as the ark was with Israel. Matter of fact, the enemies of Israel used to fear every time the ark came into the camp of Israel. They would shout, oh, they, their God is among them. Then David is king and the ark is not in Israel. And David said, ah, how long shall the ark of God be? It was in the house of Abinadab. I mean, Abinadab had the house, the ark of God for 20 years. I was shocked when I saw it this morning. For 20 years, the man had the ark of God in his house and there is no testimony. If I go home today, I'm going to sit down with Abinadab and Obedidom. One man had the ark, the very presence of God for 20 years. No testimony. Then they were bringing it and then he stumbled to fall and somebody tried to help it. And the guy was struck dead. Then, that's Uzzah. Then they pushed the ark of God into the house of Obedidom. I want to tell you two things this morning. Then in three months, the story is told of the house of Obedidom. That Obedidom began to prosper and the Lord blessed the house of Obedidom. Bible scholars and theologians believe that in those days, you weighed or you judged a man's blessing by the produce of his farm or of his livestock. So if Obedidom had one cow, it was multiplying in quick succession. If Obedidom planted a field, the field would yield the harvest before it was time for the harvest. And then he would plant again and the harvest would come. So it was, it was news all over. There was nothing barren in the house of Obedidom. If he had a wife who had been struggling to put to bed or ha have a child, suddenly she took in. Are you understand what I'm saying? So the news broke around. Obedidom suddenly has prospered. And David began to ask himself, what shall we do to bring the ark of God, the very presence of God, from the house of Obedidom into the house of Israel, that all of Israel can benefit from the presence of God? And he got the key. God does not proceed without praise. God doesn't proceed without praise. The protocol of ushering God into any situation or circumstance is the protocol of praise. Protocol of praise. You see, every time the enemy attacks your joy and you can't celebrate God, you can't think about the good things God is doing, you can't see the hand of God, what he's trying to do is to deprive you of experiencing God advance on your behalf. I've told this story many times, and every time I teach on praise, I'm sure anybody who's been around for long knows the story I'm about to tell. The story of that Air Force officer. <laughs> Amen. I've told this story so many times. But it drives this point home. He was an Air Force officer and then was laid off. You know all of our political things that we do. If you're from this part and the president is from that part, you will say, all the people from that part, we don't need you again. Amen. So he was from the West. Amen. I don't know so they just laid them off. Experienced Air Force officer just laid them off. And then he goes home that day. The news broke loose in, in Ibadan where his sister was. And she took a vehicle from Ibadan and was coming to meet him in Lagos so she could, you know, properly mourn. Amen. To properly cry with her brother. He got home. On his way home, he bought praise CDs and then loaded his six changer. Six, 12, I mean, then we used to use, you know, CD. If you had. 
three Luda. If you had one Luda, you were, you were a cool guy, big boy. If you had three Luda, ah, no, 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 God has helped you. Then we will say six and 12. Kai, you are the one eating Nigeria's money. <laughs> Amen. So he had six. He had not reached the level of eating the money very well. But he, had, he had six. He had attained some level. Amen. So he loads the six changer with pr- these pre CDs and he's just letting them rotate. And while everyone is concerned for him, he's dancing. The sister comes from a pattern and then from the gate she's wailing and you know crying. You know, you know, people who mourn mourn more than the bereaved. Ah, da, da. So <laughs> they are professional mourners. When when my father passed into glory and they were going to lay him, but they had, they had laid him, and then we we the family we had dealt with the, we had dealt with the situation, we had come to terms with what was going on. All right, they had already sealed the grave, and so we knew that all the prayers we had prayed for resurrection, all right, right now is over. So let's let's move on. Ah, we saw I saw one woman. <laughs> ah, yeah. The wait, she was crying. I said, wait, is it my father that died, or is it her? Is it my mother's husband, or is it her husband that died? Hey, hey! I was slapping the floor. Who will take care of my children? No, oh, I said, hello, ma. I, I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> we have finished the matter. You have finished. We are going home. Amen. Hallelujah. So she's crying from the gate, and the, and the brother comes and says, if, if that's what you came to do, go back. Nobody died here. So she comes into the house, and she's surprised. At this point in your life, you just lost your job. You should be downcast. What was the meaning of this? So she enters, and she just sees her husband. I mean, her brother is dancing to music. Now, in her conclusion, the thing has affected my brother's mind. That is, the problem is even worse now. He lost his job. Now he's mad. Hey! <laughs> well, she just stays, did the best she could do to console or to speak with her brother. Of course, he is so strong. There's no need to even encourage him. The Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. There are situations you go through, you don't need to draw help from anyone. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Because see, sometimes, you don't even know who you will tell, and they will believe. You don't look like what you are going through. You don't smell like it. You don't talk like it. You don't sound like it. You don't act like this. So when you say you are going through this and this, nobody will believe you. Guess what? At those times, just look yourself in the mirror and encourage yourself in the Lord. I am not my circumstance. I am only journeying through this process. I am not my situation. I am only going through this time. I am not this period of my life. It is a season that will pass and when it passes, God's glory shall be revealed. David encouraged himself in the law. And I think that's what this man was doing. So he dances and dances and dances and dances and dances. Then he goes to sleep. Following day, first in the morning, an airline company that heard he had been fired. He was a pilot. The head he had been relieved from the Air Force called him. And then they gave him a job. His salary was more than twice what he was taking from the Air Force. He had two options. To go and lie down and say, "Ah, God, you are unfaithful. You mean I've been serving you and this is what you will bring to me? How many of you remember the story of Job? The Bible says in one day everything was wiped out. The man got up, pulled his, his clothes and laid on the floor and said, Lord, naked I came. Naked I will depart. You have given, you have taken, blessed be your name forever. The Bible says, in all that Job went through, he never one day lifted up his voice in argument to God or cursed him in his heart. Why would his end not be better? You know what the enemy does when he attacks you? He tries to bring you to a place where you can doubt the faithfulness of God. You can't be doubting God and enjoying him at the same time. Write that down. Those who will enjoy the fullness of God must walk in faith consistently. So when the enemy throws doubts at you, throw back faith unto God and throw praise unto God. Fill your atmosphere with praise. Hmm. Scripture calls God Alpha Omega. That means he starts, he finishes it before he starts it. Amen. So they are bringing the Ark of Covenant, and at this time, David understood the protocol. He's a man of praise. He understood the protocol. So he tells the priest, purify yourself. Then they, they sacrifice unto God. If you read that story, the Bible says David was dancing until his garments fell off his body. After all, who gave me the royalty? Who made me who I am? Who gave me the money? Who gave me the prestige? Who gave me the position? I was a sh-
I don't know what happened. I didn't even know he had been sick. It's just posted on social media. He had, he had, his party is planning to give him the ticket for house of reps for his senatorial district. He's gone. All of that excitement, all of that good plan, all of that, he's, he's gone. So that you woke up this morning, you kicked your feet out. You got up and came to church. I prayed for someone in McCurdy in October. Was it um, October or, or November program now? Um, Total Recovery? Was it, was it, or was it Audacity of Faith? It was Audacity of Faith. The, young, the man drove his car home. Drove his own car home from office. And then drove into the, came down, opened his gates. I want you to listen to the story. Came down from the car, opened the gate, got back in the car, drove into the compound, and couldn't come down from the car. <laughs> I, uh, super I pity people who doubt that there is wickedness. Couldn't come down from the car. Then started going blind. Lost the use of his legs. Lost the use of his hands. And then started, started losing his sight. At the time I met him, he was using a walker and had glasses. And oh, the message of God prevailed. 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 God touched his body in that service, healed him, turned him around. When I went back for Total Recovery Conference, I didn't recognize the man. I had, they had to introduce him. Say, this is the person God healed. Yet we wake up, we go out. You don't know what you stepped on. The change they gave you, you don't know from which shrine or which altar it came from. You took it, went back. No challenge. We gave somebody money like that some few weeks ago, and the woman appeared in Pastor K Karen's dream and gave her back the money. When I was giving her the money, the, if you see the woman, you know there's something about her. When we were giving her the money, the driver in the car told me, said, oh God, for Abuja, they give you money like this. Oh. If you exchange your destiny, I said, I don't swallow this one. I don't swallow them. Hallelujah. But I'm saying, you don't know where the money has come from. You shook hands with people. You don't know what their intent were. Oh, let me say this and I close. We were doing a project one time. And then a grand uncle for, of mine came to the site. And then he's asking me for money. And he knew that the money I had, all the money I had at the time, was capital for that project. I said, where do you want me to get money? Uncle, can you be patient? If we finish this project now, the money that will come from the rental of this project, I can give lavishly. We will all be happy. We will all be excited. Matter of fact, what you're asking for now is too small compared to what I'll give you when the project is done. He said, hey, that's what you're saying. Then he goes home and he comes back. And I noticed that he wore a ring in his hand. Then he shakes my hand. The moment he shook my hands, my, I, I, I noticed a vibration through my hand and then up to my shoulder. Instantly, I began to mutter in the Holy Ghost under my breath. Now, I didn't speak in tongues loud. I didn't pray loud for him to hear. But he could feel the vibe that went out. Then he looked at me in the eye. He said, what? What are you doing? Eh? Look at this boy. You. Of course, he's older than me. He said, look at this boy. Go, what? What? But I held onto his hand and I prayed in the Holy Ghost. Sir, a week later, that hand he shook me with that. So let me tell you what the intent was. The intent was that because I didn't give him money, eh? as he shook hands with me, what I felt as a vibration was not just vibration. It was a release of the withering of my hand. So instead of spending money to build the project, what would we have been trying to do? Long story short, he died in the room we didn't even know. There are people you don't touch. You don't know. There are people you don't touch. We didn't even know. They came after like six days. They went inside the ah, order. Swallow me, Lord. Anyone who plans, touches, or comes against you, a destruction will visit them and we will not know when it came. Amen. Who forgiveth all our iniquities and healeth all thy diseases. Verse 4. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? What is the use of a blessed life if I don't live long enough to enjoy it? 
The enemy may not stop what God is about to bring. He can't stop it. So what will he try to do? He will attack the life that is meant to enjoy what God is trying to bring. I stand in the office of my ordination. My priestly calling and the grace I represent. And I declare destruction is far from your dwelling place. In the name of Jesus. Calamity is far from your dwelling. In the name of Jesus. With long life have you been satisfied. With length of days are you blessed with. In the mighty name of Jesus. You're going out and coming in. You are safe. You're going out and coming in. You are safe. And you're going out and coming in, you are safe. And you're going out and coming in, you are safe. We dispatch ministry angels. We dispatch angels of mercy, angels of preservation to accompany you out every time you go. In the mighty name of Jesus. You won't enter the wrong vehicle. You won't be in the wrong place. You won't eat the wrong food. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And every covenant that has been entered on your behalf without your knowledge. Negotiations that have been entered into against your life without your knowledge. We declare this morning by the power in the blood and the covenant of life we have in Christ Jesus. That such covenants and such negotiations are broken forever in the name of Jesus. If you come from my history, you won't play with death and you won't play with wicked spirits. Yeah. My pops was 42. 42. When he passed, just 42. I used to think he was old when I was a small boy until I began to get close to the age of 42. Then I realized how young he was when the enemy whisked him. The enemy does not care how young a person is. If he will cause damage, he does not care about those things. No. So my anger for calamity, destruction, and the is on another level. You see, what you have suffered and God saved you from. Are you understanding me? You, you, there is an anger in my spirit for it. Papa Bishop David Oyepo, he grew up in abject poverty. So when you hear him talk about prosperity and riches, it's because of what he suffered. See, our ministries are born from our painful experiences. When you go through a fire and you are coming out on the other side, God gives you a weapon to attack that which took you through that fire. Oh, Edipo, poverty, so he attacks poverty. Dr. Paul Enetje, witchcraft manipulations in the family, you hear him, he's talking about it consistently. Ah, I know what we went through. Sudden disaster. At the peak of his glory, boom, the enemy struck. So all that God was preparing for him to enjoy, he couldn't enjoy it. Two, three, four, five years, the enemy whisked everything away. So forgive me if you come to church and pastor is mad about destruction and calamity. Because I know you don't have to look for the devil's trouble before he comes for you. So again, I stand in the precious blood of Jesus. Ah, I dip my feet in that blood and I prophesy every satanic intention to bring you disaster at the time of your celebrations, at the time of your victories, to cause any form of havoc in and around your life. Such intentions are buried this morning. Such intentions are cancelled this morning. We nullify such wickedness in the name of Jesus. And everyone who avails themselves as an agent and a bottle selector to be used of the wicked against your life, I decree if they don't repent, they expire in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Anything that will take praise from your mouth will not happen to you this year. No, anything that will take praise out of your mouth will not happen to you this year. Ah, I decree. One praise report after another praise report. One victory after another victory. One success after another success. One breakthrough after another breakthrough. One celebration after another celebration. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, before you recover from the last, God will do the next one. Before the next door has been closed behind you, there's another door opening before you. You believe your amen is loud. Roto Satabalagadas, Robekete Paradis Solaha, 
Yes, Anaba. This morning we're going to do one last praise for the service. And this praise is to plug us into that which God has released already. I want you to let yourself go. Are you following me? Let yourself go. Hey. The testimony you're about to share, praise God for it now. Eh? Something that will happen in your life, you won't be able to sit. Are you understanding me? You won't be able to sit. A friend of mine has been asking me, he did an investment and he said, he said to me, Pastor, when this investment blows, I'm going to come to your church. I don't even want it. I will call you. If you're not in the office, I'll say, give me the key to the church. I don't want anybody to be there. Even if there's no service, I will come and I will push the seats back and I'll just be rolling on the floor from side to side, giving thanks to God. There are things that will happen to you, you will run mad. Sir, my uncle one time um, was attacked by armed robbers. The robbers asked him to lay on the floor. They commanded him. They said all kinds of things to him. He came to church the following Sunday and he said he has never praised God and rolled on the floor. Yet, Amrabat came to his house and made him roll on the floor. For that, he has come back to God. Sir, he rolled from one end of a church to the other end of a church. And rolled. See, a power was released in the atmosphere. He got up from that experience. He was living it. He was a tenant before. He has his house now. And properties all over the city. For doing what? The instructions of God don't make sense. They are foolishness to the wise. Name and say, how can you tell me to go and dip myself in that dirty water? I didn't know more posh rivers in, in Syria. I even have, even have swimming pool in my compound. If it's bath, I am bathing in swimming pool. Royal pool. So I should go and bath in jacuzzi. I'm going to bath in, in, in Jota, Jota, dirty water, Jota. Jesus said, pour the water. Give, go and give the governor of the feast. It's water that they used to, used to have washed leg with. Say, so go and give governor of the feast. Foolishness. Say, so bring the two fish, five loaves. Tell the people to sit down. Go and give it to them. Foolishness. It doesn't make sense. Say, so my husband borrowed money. The, the creditors have come to take my son. Say, so go and borrow more vessels. <laughs> Foolishness. The axe head fell inside the water. He said, cut a stick. Give me. Dropped stick inside water. Axe head swam. Stick sank. Foolishness. Egyptians are coming. You know, see river. See, let's be going. Just cross. Let's be going. <laughs> His instructions, foolishness to those of us, butter when they produce. And I pray for somebody. Let your obedience to prophetic instruction to praise God this morning give you a result that you cannot hide. Hey, 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 hey. See, there are things that will happen in your life. You're, you are so conservative. People won't know. Butter. There are things that will take place. You will try to hide it. You can't hide it. Someone under the sound of my voice, you will tie the breakthrough to this service. Aya, uh, you will tie the breakthrough to this service. You will know that this service broke you into that dimension in the mighty name of Jesus. Just lift up your hands and say thank you to God for his word and thank you for that which you are about to